Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Ethiopia has a colorful past with uh, war-torn, impoverished neighborhoods, but now it is becoming a, a burgeoning place for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we interview Pastor Mezgebu Tsemaru. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, I am blessed to bring you an international report from a visiting pastor, not just a pastor, but an apostle who has helped plant over 400 churches in his home country of Ethiopia. Joining us now live via Skype from an American location where he is visiting here in San Antonio this week, Pastor Mezgebu Semeru. Welcome, sir, to the program. Thank you so much. So I am honored to meet you, sir. You are an illustrious pastor. Uh, over 22 years ago, you founded a church and describe the church that you started. Yeah, the church uh, we started is uh, called Emmanuel United Church. So it is the result of the Holy Spirit movement because the Holy Spirit is the one who came and evangelized us. We were in the Orthodox Church. <clears throat> he opened our eyes to see the truth. So without any preacher, you know, he convicted our sins. So we confess our sins and we declare that Jesus is the Savior. That's how we start our movement and after persecution and the movement start grows. So it's a movement all over the country. Well, after you became a born again Christian and left the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which uh, I assume is full of ritual and tradition, but does not have the Holy Ghost like you were talking about. Your church has the Holy Ghost and your church believes the Bible is the inspired infallible word of God. You began preaching the gospel on the streets and, and in the cities of Addis Ababa and across Ethiopia and your church continued to grow. But why did you stop pastoring? Now you are planting other churches. Yeah, <clears throat> in the last, <clears throat> sorry, in the last few years, God impressed in my life to see beyond my church, beyond my denomination, because there are unreached people group of Ethiopia, which represent 47% of the total population. There are 31 unreached people group in Ethiopia, which is some in some places their Christianity may be 0.01%, 0.03%, in some places it's zero. So this is vision in my heart to reach this unreached people group. That's why I leave my pastoral position. Now I'm working in many parts of the country, reaching the nation and changing lives. Well, thank God for this. You have a great education. You have attended Bible college and also got a degree from uh, the United Kingdom. And now you are here in America. What is your goal for this trip to America? Uh, my goal to this America is uh, to visit friends and partners like uh, WGS Ministry, uh, working with Jonathan Williams. So uh, to share uh, our vision, especially we want to launch this Unreached People Group uh, vision. We want to send st starting from September, uh, Ethiopian calendar in September, we want to send these missionaries to this Unreached People Group. So. I want to share this vision uh, as much as I can for friends and partners in USA. So many of the unreached people groups within the country of Ethiopia uh, obviously do not speak English, although your English is very good. What language do you print Bibles in and how do you, what, how do you communicate? Uh, actually in Ethiopia, we have more than 86 language, so we have many hundreds tribes, tribal people. So uh, when, when you go to the outreach, we use the tribal language, we use translators. So uh, we have Bibles in different languages, like in Amharic, in Oromifa, in Tigrinya, 
in Somalia, we have Bibles, both in Old Testament and New Testament, but still, you know, you know, relating with 86 different languages, we are still, uh, we are not there. So um, we are still working on uh, translating the Bible and approaching donors to help us on translating Bibles uh, and uh, audio Bibles for the Irish people. Group. So you are translating Bibles into the tribal languages. You are going into uh, the countryside where, where people uh, do not even speak the main language of the government. Uh, they've probably never even been to the city of Addis Ababa. Uh, and yet, you love them with the love of Jesus Christ. Why is Jesus so important to you? Because Jesus changed my life. So, it's, uh, um, Jesus is the one who changed my life. Jesus is the one who came and gave me life. So, at the first uh, moment when Jesus came to us, at the first apostle, when they meet Jesus, as they said, we found the Messiah. The Messiah found us, so we want to take this gospel. We want to share this peace that we experience to others. So that's why we are traveling. We are going like we travel four days and five days, and spend like 15 days in the bush and sharing the good news and planting churches, making disciples in different parts of uh, the country. What compelled us is the love of Christ. Amen to that. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I will ask Pastor Mezgebu Tsemaru how to plant a church. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial, and finally Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Ethiopian missionary and Apostle who has planted over 400 churches and is translating Bibles into dozens of languages in the tribal regions of Ethiopia. So pastor, let me ask you, um, when you go into the bush, as you said, and you spend four or five days traveling just to reach some of the harder places to reach, how do you plant a church? Uh, we use the, the local people. So as far as we are there, we select the local people and we train them. We give them a training and we equip them so, so they can be a church planter and is a disciple maker in that area. We strongly believe in indigenous church planters. So we want to uh, put 
someone who can speak the language, who can know the village, who can know them. So that's really working. So how we are planting is by using the local people and supporting them, encouraging them, so giving them continuous training for the church planters. And you must see many miracles there. I mean, uh, we're gonna show a short video in a moment of people coming by the hundreds to be baptized and you see great successful fruit and evangelism, but does the Holy Spirit work through you and sometimes maybe you see miracles? Yeah, we, we have seen miracles, especially when we are in outreach. You know, we have seen in our eyes after we preach the gospel, uh, a person who never walked like for more than 30 years, he, he stand up and he walks. So we have seen so many miracles uh, as we preach the gospel because so whenever we preach the gospel, you know, there is power in there is power in the name of Jesus. There is heal in, healing in the name of Jesus. So we experience that when we share the gospel. So especially uh, as you see this baptism, God is doing amazing work in Emmanuel Church movement. So these people, you know, in the baptism only in two areas, you know, they, it's, it's, it's not include all Ethiopian part. So this baptism is only into two areas. So you can see that, you know, we are baptizing this now, uh, May 7, we baptize 1,300 people. When I return back, we baptize another five or 600 people. You know, God is moving mightily in our nation. So we are seeing his wonders and miracles because we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a short break and watch this video of hundreds of people being baptized in Ethiopia.
So there you saw the video of hundreds of people uh, and pastor, you say up to 1,300 people at one time go and be baptized. In another place, over 100 people go to be baptized. Now, how do you, uh, I suppose, trust that the pastors are discipling these people and forming real churches afterwards? What is your network like? Yeah, you see, before these people come to a baptism, you know, we teach them at least for six months because they come from different background, from the animistic background. So experiencing witchcraft or witch doctors and all these things. So the church leaders and the church pastors in, the, in their areas, they will teach them at least for six months. So after that six months, they will be ready for the baptism. So immediately after that baptism, we will put them in a small group. So the discipleship process will continue. So this is how we try to disciple them. We are trying to disciple them. Well, this is amazing. You, you actually train the convert for six months before you allow them to be baptized. And I suppose if they're going to become a pastor, they get training for many years. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's take another short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask the pastor about the political situation in Ethiopia and if he ever encounters Muslims. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of uh, our ability to have a healthy marriage, but with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org you too can have a godly marriage. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by missionary and church planter, Pastor Mezgebu Semeru. And Pastor, I'm so glad to meet you. Please talk about um, the political situation in Ethiopia. We remember so many times in, in decades past, we have seen famine and war in Ethiopia, but now there is encouraging positive hope. That's true, that's true. Yeah, you know, most, most people when they uh, hear the name of Ethiopia, they, they relate Ethiopia with a, a famine. Uh, that, that was true, but it is not true this time. So God is blessing our nation. So we have a lot of resources. So even in a few, if in a few years, a few years back, there was a famine, but we were, we were able to control it with a ro local resource. So that was really a blessing. So the nation is growing. Uh, so the government is doing, they are doing their best uh, in agriculture in, in many ways. So it's one of uh, the growing economy, even in Africa, uh, is uh, ne next to, I think, 
I, I have to report China and Brazil, one of the growing economy in the world is Ethiopian economy. Well, thank God for that good report. Can you talk about uh, the president there? You say uh, he is encouraging to Christians or is he actually a believer himself? Uh, now we have a prime minister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, he, he loved the nation. He, he see the nation equally. Uh, that's, uh, I, I was listening even last night, his, uh, one of his speech. So, you know, God gave us like a father who can love all of us uh, equally. Of course, he's a Christian guy. He's a born again Christian, but he loves his nation. That was our prayer. You know, we ask God to give us someone who loves the nation, who, who can give us peace, who unite us, who help us to develop, who help us to, you know, to, to use our resources. So he is really the answer of our prayer. Well, thank God for that. <clears throat> in so many other countries in Africa, there is a conflict with the Muslims. And I don't know if this is true in Ethiopia, but when you plant churches, do you ever have conflict with people of Muslim faith? Um, it's, it's not uh, as serious as you hear like other countries. Maybe, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, going and planting a church where 99% Muslim dominated area is not easy. There will be uh, challenges, there will be obstacles. Uh, you know, we have churches that like 99%, 98% Muslim dominated area. We have churches. So we have challenges and we have persecutions, but we believe that persecution is part of what we believe. So they are persecuted us because we believe in Jesus. So even in this, in the middle of persecution, we always try to show them the love of Christ. So it is not as uh, severe uh, as uh, maybe we hear in different parts of the world or uh, different parts of Africa. Pastor, how can we pray for you? I know the people of America love what you're doing and the Christians in America want to support you, but I want to begin with prayer. So what is your request from God and maybe we can pray for you? Yeah, I, I want you to pray for uh, our nation so that, uh, you know, Jesus, one of Jesus' prayer, I want to take also my ministry prayer, my personal prayer. The harvest is plenty and the workers are few. So please pray for our nation so that God give us workers. You know, the workers, the work is, you know, the harvest is plenty. So, so please pray for us so that God give us inspired, spirit-filled workers in our nation. The second prayer is we want to really send uh, missionaries to this area. Uh, so we need financial support. You know, uh, we need to give training. So we have to bring them to the training center, these local missionaries, and uh, we train them, we equip them, and we send them back. So this involves a lot of financial uh, resource. So uh, please pray for us for God's provision uh, as we are preparing to send several uh, missionaries to different parts of the country and planting different churches. I agree, let us pray for you right now. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing now on the ministry, not only of this beloved pastor, but of every gospel teacher and every trainer. Father, we pray that uh, there will be another great revival because of the missionary efforts and the training center that you have established there in Ethiopia. God, I pray that as they bring indigenous, native, tribal language speakers into this training school, that they will be sent back home with a full knowledge of the Bible and a full knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they will be able to plant more churches. Father, as this pastor says, uh, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. And Father, we pray that you would send more workers, even, uh, you know, resources. Father, we pray that American churches will partner with this ministry and provide the finances for this ministry and that they will continue to grow the church and build uh, even more than, fa Father, I pray for not just 400 churches, but 4,000 churches to be in Amen. this place. Father, throughout the nation of Ethiopia, we ask you to lift them up and preach the gospel in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Pastor, Amen. maybe you have a, a website <clears throat> or a place where people can send donations. How can they find you? Uh, they can send the donations through uh, WGS Ministry. Uh, so that was the easiest way uh, I can get uh, donation. So uh, uh, I think you are familiar with uh, WGS Ministry. Yes, and there's also uh, 4cmgm.org. What is this website? That is my website. Uh, so uh, I'm not uh, st uh, already established, you know, the payball or the connection because uh, I live in Ethiopia. So for you, uh, for anyone who want to donate, the easiest way is to link with the America uh, ministry. So, uh, so far, uh, Jonathan and the WGS ministry is facilitating uh, uh, donations. Uh, so you, they can send WGS ministry PO Box 90047 San Antonio, Texas 78209. Yes, and uh, I will ask you to repeat that address again so people can write it down. Say again. WGS ministry P.O. Box 90047, San Antonio, Texas 78209. Perfect. Thank you. We will have uh, Pastor Jonathan Williams, who was a guest last week, will collect those donations and forward it directly to the ministry in Ethiopia. Pastor, thank you for coming on. God bless you in Jesus' name. We are out of time, but our website is PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.